monster storms, killer drought, famine, rising ocean levels, and melting ice packs. Is mankind about to destroy itself, or are the facts being buried by bad science? Tonight, a KUSI News special report. Global warming, the other side. And now, your host, Sean Coleman. Thank you and good evening, and we're really glad you joined us tonight. You know, it's hard to distinguish between what's true and what's not. Now, much of what you see on TV is great entertainment, but it's fiction. This program, however, is not fiction. It is true to the very best of my ability to determine the truth. It's a beautiful morning. First and foremost, I want you to know that I'm like you. I love this planet Earth. It's vital that we protect it with all we have. Clean air and clean water and preserving Earth's natural beauty, they come first and foremost to me. And oh, I also want you to know that this telecast is not about a political point of view. Here's what it is about, scientific truth. And here's the truth as I know it to be. Our carbon footprints are not creating any significant global warming. The global warming frenzy is based on a myth, a scientific hypothesis that has gone bad. Now I'm asking you to open up your mind for the balance of this hour to give a fair hearing to the other side of the debate. The issue is extremely important right now because first, the Environmental Protection Agency has now classified carbon dioxide a pollutant and a health hazard. This ruling will lead to major new taxes and fees on everything from heating and air conditioning our homes and workplaces, to the price of food at the supermarket, to the cost of gas for our cars. The EPA ruling may have a major impact on your way of life. Second, the U.S. Senate will soon consider cap and trade legislation that will also lead to higher taxes for fossil fuel-based energy and drive up the cost for food and clothing and for our TVs and our computers, everything that's part of our lives today. Third, the United Nations continues to work toward a treaty that will tax the wealthy modern nations, particularly the United States, to benefit the third world countries. President Obama has pledged 200 billion of our tax dollars to that cause. Greenhouse gases and our carbon footprints have become a key issue with our government at the same time that the science behind the concept is crumbling. So let me try to make it clear. Our carbon footprints are from the carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere to support our lifestyles. This carbon dioxide mostly comes from the burning of fossil fuels, such as gasoline in our cars, the jet fuel in the airliners we ride, the power plants that create the electricity we use for lights, TV sets, computers, air conditioning, iPods, and all the rest. Well, the theory is that this carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, and as it builds up in the atmosphere and interacts with water vapor, it produces runaway global warming. The entire global warming frenzy is based on that scientific hypothesis, but the theory is being proven wrong every day. It is invalid. It has turned out to be bad science. So let me explain why it's bad science. The hypothesis is that carbon dioxide is a super powerful greenhouse gas that will cause Earth's temperature to skyrocket into an uncontrollable heat wave. The crew here has tried to teach me how to use this contraption here, so if I don't kill myself. Al Gore uses this chart of temperatures and carbon dioxide from the last 650,000 years to show the correlation of carbon dioxide called CO2 and temperature. The data was produced by paleoclimatologists from ice cores drilled in the Arctic. Mr. Gore's basic point is, when there is more carbon dioxide, the temperature gets warmer. Mr. Gore and the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, contend that CO2 is a greenhouse gas that traps the sun's heat in our atmosphere, causing warming. And they say that our carbon footprints are created by using fossil fuels to power our advanced civilization. So burning fossil fuels releases CO2 into the atmosphere, and as the CO2 builds up, 
It leads to uncontrollable global warming, with all the dire consequences Mr. Gore lists in his movie. But despite Mr. Gore's big, fancy spike on that chart, which is sheer speculation, and not happening, as his chart predicts, he does admit... And the, the relationship is actually very complicated. And would have to be because despite that impressive chart that requires a lift to climb, carbon dioxide is only a tiny trace gas in the atmosphere. And it would require a very complicated process for it to have much impact on our temperatures.